So now I am Santa 24-7, 365 because, you know, it, it's there. I can't disguise it. I got to utilize it. And it is so much fun creating happy, joyful, positive memories for families of all sizes all over the world. And also, I want to like underline people of all ages, because if if people listening to this most likely haven't been at the networking event you and me met, and whenever Santa joins the room, everybody lights up a little bit. Do you want to know how Santa does business? That's what we're going to discuss in this chapter of the Business Library, because I have Santa Papa John on. An absolute great bloke, the best Santa I know. Um, just start us off. How did you land on becoming Santa, John? Well, good afternoon, ho ho ho, Mads. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. You know, my story is pretty simple but very unique because I'm a truck driver by trade, and I'll convert for you because you're uh, you're over there in the European where they still do kilometers. I've done 5 million kilometers. Ooh, and for your uh, American friends that are watching, over 3 million miles. And I met my new wife, and she is the one that converted me into Santa Claus because she said, I didn't meet John, I met Santa Claus. So now I am... Santa 24-7, 365, because, you know, it, it's there. I can't disguise it. I got to utilize it. And it is so much fun creating happy, joyful, positive memories for families of all sizes all over the world. And also, I want to like underline people of all ages, because if People listening to this most likely haven't been at the networking event you and me met. And whenever Santa joins the room, everybody lights up a little bit. And, you know, I, I've heard many people say that. In fact, I've been invited to groups for that reason. Santa, we want you to bring come to our room so you bring a smile, you bring some cheers, you bring some excitement to the room. And people love the fact that and I've had one lady actually give me that wonderful compliment, Mads. And it was, you know, Santa, you know, the, the fun fact about you is, she says, it doesn't matter what room you're in, who you're talking to, where you're talking to. You are always the same. You're positive, you're cheerful, and you're happy. And that lights up a room and it causes people to smile. And we all yeah. know in this goofy world that we live in, there's a lot of people out there that don't even have a reason to smile. So I love meeting people like that because I can make them smile. Well, if I've been unlucky on my networking journey and I've just been pitched for 20 minutes straight, basically, <laughs> then I might not be the most positive person either at that point. So there, there's like always like nice to give that complete change, which is why I appreciate it so much. Well, you're more than welcome. And, and the, you know, we've met on a few uh, networking rooms, meetings, whatever you want to describe them at. And we all know, we have seen the results where when I join a room, it sort of brightens up and lights up. And that's what I can do for families. And that's what I can do for businesses. Yeah. I, because first I, I saw Santa, I was like, of course, Santa. I people employ Santas over here as well. But this Santa is when it comes to business is so smart. Because like for example, one of his services is a realtor appreciation service. Like when I saw that on your website, I was wait, I have to read more about this because how does that link into Santa? Um and that made me want to ask, how do you come up with such a unique idea? Because I don't think there's other Santas doing that one. Well, you know, it's kind of cool because the fact is when I network with people all around the world, and yes, I do all around the world. I've talked to people and I, I add the giggle. I've talked to people from 18 different countries in the last 10 days. And it doesn't matter where I'm talking to people from. They all ask the same question. 
what are you doing and how come you can come up with these unique ideas? Well, you know, I don't accept the responsibility for all my ideas. I accept the responsibility that I network with people that have some great ideas and say, Santa, you should come up with this idea. And then I tweak them and I twist them and I make them <laughs> uniquely mine. And that's the power of the positive thinking. That's the power of networking because people have different impressions of Santa from different parts of the world. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually right. And I, I love that you just mentioned it. That if you're out there, you're putting in the work, then you don't need to be a creative genius to come up with genius ideas because people are going to give them to you. Well, th you know what? And whether you take that idea or not, that, of course, is up to you. And if you want to be uniquely different and stand out in the crowd, you don't dress all up in black and say, I'm going to be out at there at midnight and you're going to have to find me. People have said to me, you know, I have an amazing wife that makes these shirts for me and I've got about 25 of them. So, yes, this is how I dress year round. But I've had on a few occasions lately where I go into a networking meeting where there's 60, 70, 80, pick a number and someone will say, Hey, Santa's in the room. He sticks out like a sore thumb and I want to talk to him because why is he here in June, July, August, whenever the time frame is, what is he doing networking? And then of course I get the wonderful opportunity to have a conversation with him and I leave them shaking their head and going, I want to network more with this guy because he has some really unique ideas. Uh, yeah, and I think that's like a lesson that each person listening to this needs to take in. Because the thing, I've, I've only thought about it, I haven't taken action, I've kind of been procrastinating about it. But it's buying like a real Viking metal helmet, what required me to get some earbuds as well. But same principle, stand out, be, and I'm just playing into my heritage. I'm picking a Viking helmet because I'm thinking there's not like a big because I look particularly like a Viking. I'm probably quite a scorny Viking, if that. <laughs> I imagine I would be bullied by the other Vikings. I, I do. I thought about that once or twice. But, but, we, but we all know, Mads, if you want to succeed, if you want to stand out, if you want to provide a service, and especially like you and like me, there is... 5,000 people doing the exact same thing we're doing. Yep. But what makes us stand out from the 4,999 people that are trying to do what we do? Spot on. If like you want to succeed, you know, if you want to build a rocket, you don't talk to guys that milk submarines. If you, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, you don't, uh, you know, participate with street people and, and enjoy their, their, their meeting because they're not going to give you the advice. I'm not saying I'm the almighty marketing genius. I'm a truck driver by trade, but I've learned to ask questions and what makes me stand out is I ask questions and I answer questions. I don't subject myself to, oh, I, o I only want to talk to Mads today because he's the type of marketing guy I want to talk to today. Well, Bill's over here and he's got the 10 better ideas than Mads does. So if I participate and equally communicate with everybody, somebody's going to give me a little nugget. And the little nuggets adding up can create a whole different story, a whole different background, a whole new way to look at a subject. And that's what makes you stand out. Well, we're just going to wrap the episode up with that bit of knowledge. That was 
you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think just that simple bit of advice of not being afraid of asking questions is, is probably one of the best bits of advice you can give to any person. Like defeat that ego, go out, ask questions, just be curious. And the well, second you part. Know, you, you are going uh, to a networking meeting or any type of meeting to learn about somebody else's business. You're not going there to, hey, Mads, I've got the best idea in the book and you've got to sign up for today and it's only going to cost you $50 a month and this is going to change your life. You're not going there with that understanding. You're going there with the understanding of, hey, Mads has got some pretty cool ideas on how to change the marketing world. It might not be the whole spectrum, but it might be a little tidbit here and it might be a little tidbit there. And that's what makes you stand out from the next guy. I mean, the old proverbial, there is, come November and December, there's a, a million Santas out there. There's a million guys that put the suits on and put a hat on and the fake beard, and that makes them Santa. To a point. It comes from the heart. It comes from the mindset. And it, you have to have the ability to love children and love people and be willing to share the story of why you can put the magic of Christmas in people's hearts. Yeah. Like finding that natural, that feels natural. You don't, of course, it's a character, but it doesn't feel like it's a character. Because the character's personality is similar to what your own personality is. I like that I've heard. That, that's right. So I, I've come up with some very unique ideas to market Santa around the world. Because we all know it, it's the technology like we're using right now, Mads. It's like we're sitting at the kitchen table having a cup of tea with one another, having a conversation. And we can utilize this technology around the world. 24 hours a day if you're awake when the other person is awake and you want to have a conversation there's nothing stopping you from doing that around the world and sharing business ideas sharing business concepts the more people you can ask questions of the more you're going to find out how to do your job better because the old proverbial, there is always, you know, taking you back to when you went in high school and, and growing up, there was always the bigger kid that could beat you up so you didn't go make friends with him. He made friends with his buddy so you could become friends with him. There was always the way around. Well, you, you go into uh, a business knowing that you have a great idea, but you might not know how to market you might not know how to use do the books you might not know how to create an advertising platform so what do you do you talk to other people that know more about it than you do and you know if you listen to millionaires talk millionaires have a different mindset not because they have the money but because they learned the lesson to surround themselves with people that know more than they do about a subject. And that can go back to you and me starting out door number one that we knock on. But you got to have the, the guts and the wants to open the door to take that first step. Yeah, it's there's this um, saying like if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. The Absolutely. lower down you're on the list, the better the room is. Uh, one thing we just briefly talked about before we got married is you go to like 10 networking events a week, or you do networking for 10 hours a week. That was That was how we 
for 10, 10 hours a day, was it? 10 hours a day? Yes. Apparently, my numbers got very confused. <laughs> so, yeah, to networking 10 hours a day. That requires you to go out and find a lot of people to speak to and meet. How do you go about finding the places to network and the people to network with? Well, the old proverbial, if Mads belongs to a group and he puts a, puts a picture up that, hey, I was at this great networking event with some great people and I see that, I'm going to get a hold of Mads and say, uh, get me an invite to that room because I only know you in that room and I, I want to share some happiness with that room. Creating the friendship, creating the business relationship to share ideas, to share stories. I, I mean, this week alone, I've got introduced to three different groups because, wow, this group is going to love what I do. But I had never heard of that group. Because until someone told me. So you watch the LinkedIn posts. You watch the Facebook posts. You watch, uh, you check out Alignable. You, you check out where business people gather, congregate. And they will share ideas on the networking groups that they're happy that they joined, that they belong to. Don't barge in well sometimes you can if you got you know if you're brave enough and you want to ask the right questions but you know i just sent you uh, another connection for a wonderful meeting from a group of people from australia you know your timing is is better than mine i, I get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to this meeting but you know networking is networking around the world People want to ask questions. People want to ask questions about your business, about your ability, your ideas, and you should be proud to share those ideas and ask questions about their business. And that is the power of networking. And, you know, remember, folks, don't go into a networking meeting I'm going to sell Mads because he, I've got the best idea and he's going to buy this and it's going to be his uh, uh, deal of the day. Nope. I'm going to go in there and say, Hey Mads, what do you do? What are you best at? How can I help you promote it? And how do we share the relationship? Cause we're going to win, win when you're going to introduce me to some of your friends. Cause no like, and trust is the power three words of networking. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I love what you talked about in regards to don't go in there and just sell, sell, sell. Keep in mind, why, why are people at a networking event? They're there to meet people or they're there to sell something. Either one or the other, depending on which mindset that they have. But they're not there to buy something. They don't, they're not thinking to themselves, I'm going to this networking event to find the next answer for my event. That's not what goes through their head. So or, or it could be as simple, Mads, as, hey, I've got an idea, but I need to share it with some people to get their feedback to see if it's a worthwhile idea to proceed and put my time and effort into that idea. Yes. Surround you yourself. like that, it's going to work. You know, going back, you surround your people that are with people that are smarter than you, that know more about certain ideas than you are. You're going to be able to build your idea to a better quality product that you're going to be able to share with the world when it's time. Yes, like be willing to to do the research and uh, being patient. It, it goes into the same mindset of just being there to network. Um, I love the question you also bring, like, how can I help promote you? How can I help promote what you're doing? I think that that's an absolute brilliant question and something I'm going to integrate into my own networking cycle. I love to 
bring in new things just to see how people react to different words, different sayings, different tonalities, all these kinds of things. Psychology is just one of the things I, I truly love. So I appreciate you sharing this with us and I would encourage the audience to also go out and use it. And so when it comes to running a business, what is the best bit of advice you've heard in the five, six years you ran your business? Ooh. Ow, 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 you're making me think. <laughs> <laughs> cruel of me. Um, find a product, a service, a subject that people need, that people want, and you will be successful. If you're doing the same old, same old, same old, yours might be better than the next five guys, but you have to market that it's better because of A, B, and C. Now, like I said, I am no marketing genius, and I'm taking one foot in front of the other like a lot of small business people are. But if you accept and you realize that there is no such thing as a dumb question, only if you're scared to ask the question, will you be a fool? You got to regret it in the future if you don't ask it. I can you got that right. That. You got uh, that right. I have said on multiple occasions, and it's a bit embarrassing after going to an event and then having to message the person hosting the event the question afterwards. And like, um, why it's going did you back ask? to high. It's going back to high school, Mads. Uh, you know, you wanted to ask that girl out, and uh, you were always, uh, you know, not quite brave enough to ask her. But then when you became in your early 20s and you run into her again, are you going to make the same mistake twice? Nope. I don't like that regret. That's a bad, horrible feeling. I <laughs> prefer to live my life with as minimum of as possible. Right. Well, you know, it's funny how people approach their business their, and their marketing ideas because you have to present it. And again, I am not the marketing genius. I've been asking questions. Give people the idea that they want your services. They need your services. Not, I'm selling you the services. When it becomes they want, it's a different mindset and it's a different idea that they have not seen before and they'll be more open to new ideas and new ways to be presented the same old, same old. It's like the traction. It's so much more powerful. Uh, people love to buy. They hate to be sold. Um, it's a bit different in Denmark. It feels like they hate to buy as well sometimes. They have anything that has to do with spending money. Nope. It... But, you know, one thing that I've been really promoting when I have one-on-ones with different people, tell them about you because they want to know who you are so that you can know, like, and trust. And once people have the know, like, and trust, they're more than willing most of the time to share your knowledge, your idea with their brother, sister, aunt, uncle, friends. And there's the power of networking. Because Mads is one person, but Mads knows 25 people behind him that he'll now share me with them because I've built up the know, like, and trust with Mads to understand that we have now a relationship. We're friends and we have 
the ability to share ideas with one another. And he can now safely tell his friends and his family that, hey, you know, I met this pretty cool Santa. He's got some really unique ideas. And all of a sudden, you're not marketing to one person. You're marketing to 50 people or 40, 500. They say the average person knows 600 people. If you're in a room with 10 people, you're not marketing to 10 people. You're marketing to 60,000. No, 6,000. Still a lot. Still a lot. You know, and, and my business is run on numbers. I know there are people out there that don't like Christmas, don't really like Santa for whatever reason they may say or don't say but I don't need to have every person like me I don't have every I don't need to have every person want to buy my services or subscribe to my services but if I have you know four five six out of 20 okay I'm happy with that you know I can go next because when I look at the big picture and that's what a lot of people forget to do. They, they're, they're looking at the little picture. They're looking at the idea that they're only dealing with five or ten people. No, why aren't you dealing with five or ten thousand? You know, get the word out. Spread the word. Get your friends. You know, I do a video every Sunday. I do one every day. And I promote happiness and positivity. Don't forget our veterans. Say thank you to our veterans because without our veterans, we would be in a world of hurt. And, of course, our seniors. Say hello to a senior because maybe a senior hasn't spoken to anybody in five days. And, you know, you 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 saying hello, how is your day going? They might be ecstatic and talk your ear off for five or ten minutes. That, if you're lucky. But, you know, sometimes... They don't talk to a lot of people. And, you know, we need to realize that our seniors have a wealth of knowledge, have a wealth of stories that they just want to share with people. You know? And there's much to learn. You can learn yes, about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, the proverbial God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen to other people. Share their ideas. Because the person that you share a story to or an idea with could now share that with 20, 30, 40 people. And that's the power. And that's what we need to do with more people, more businesses. Get the understanding that who's the guy behind the story and what makes him unique, what makes him special. And you never know who you're going to run into that might have a similar background to you that will make the connection even more powerful. I like the the approach you talk about because they're all about like make people say good things about you. I like to call it dog marketing because everybody likes the dogs and the dogs are loved by everybody. But it's going out there make people say good things about you. When I'm meeting people, always make sure to have a little bit about what I do. But in a forty five hour minute meeting, we might only talk one two minutes about that. I want them to have an understanding of what I do because then when they go out and speak to people and, and they hear somebody that's looking for that, they think of me because I'm the constant repurposer that they know, like, and trust because that relationship is built up. And it's funny how easy it is to sell somebody else's service. It's easier for me to sell Santa approved, then it's easier for Santa to sell content repurposing for me because it's like that like second level. Especially when you're starting out, I think it could be a very big help 
Um, it can avoid a bunch of those testimonials and can I see your case studies where you don't necessarily have a lot to back you up. If somebody else introduces you, I don't think I've ever done that with a, when I've gotten an introduction. I don't think I've ever been asked for a testimonial or a case study in my life because people trust that I know my stuff because I'm trusted by somebody else. So that's already built in. I wanted to make sure that that was in there. And now that I actually mentioned Santa approved and people have probably like asked themselves because it's in the nice background, what is Santa approved? Well, it came about in the power of a network marketing meeting. There again, we use the power. So I had made videos for all these people that I was in the room with. And the one guy says, you know, Santa, we got to actually come up with a way to show people that you actually like us. And of course, we all giggled and laughed. And so we started, you know, chatting and stuff like this and throwing words around. And somebody said, Santa approved. And I went, say that again, Santa approved. And I went, are you Santa approved? Well, of course, that just stuck in the brain cell. I went up and talked to my wife, and she loved the idea. She sent a message to the granddaughter, Santa, SOX, call after work, because Santa's <laughs> got a court in question. Well, the granddaughter just graduated from art school. Now she's doing websites, so she's got the art major. So I said, I need a badge. I've come up with this idea, and it's sticking to me, and I know I can go somewhere with it. Say, so I'll move out of the way. See. That badge right there is, are you sent approved? So then I come with, up with the idea. All right. I got to ask some questions because you got to eliminate the, you know, the drugs and the alcohol and the guns and the cigarettes and the lawyers. We don't want to deal with lawyers because, you know, we've all, you know, lawyer, lawyers need to be pushed to the side. <laughs> Excuse me. So I, I come up with, you know, five, six, seven questions. To, to find out if people have the heart of Christmas, they have the heart of giving back. And then I do an interview with them to find out whether they are Santa approved or not, where I ask them a couple more questions. Now, Santa's been around for 1,753 years. Don't I look good? I know, yeah. it's it's the healthy water. And, Something you know, Santa is the water. number one... <laughs> Sorry, stepped on you, what'd you say? I was just saying there's something special in that Arctic water up there. <laughs> Absolutely. And Santa is the number one marketed character in the world. Did you know that? I never thought about it, but when you say it, I do definitely believe it. I see so, him a lot of know, places. As I talk to various people, the marketing people are loving this idea because who doesn't want to work with Santa? Can you imagine Santa making a video to promote your business? That's one of the parts of being Santa approved. Yes, you're coming to join my community of the workshop and you're going to be glorified elves as part of the community. There again, it's been changed through the power of network in town. I said, oh, you're just going to become part of the community. And someone says, well, doesn't Santa have a workshop? <laughs> well, yeah, so now everybody that signs up is going to be part of the workshop and they're going to be glorified elves because we're all trying to spread happiness and cheerfulness. Well, you know, the marketing people have come up with uh, some many different interesting statements to go along with this. And, and one of them was, have you got this thing protected? I'm a truck driver. What do you mean by that? And they said, well, have you got this thing trademarked? And I went, should I? Oh, absolutely. How about yesterday? So as the story goes, this was a meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning with these marketing guys. At 1 o'clock, I'm meeting with a financial lady out of Los Angeles. And I'm telling her the story. And she says, I don't know what kind of horseshoe you got up your butt. But I have volunteered at a community center for the last 15 years to help people file the paperwork for trademarks and patents she said 
Here's the website to go through. Here's the, the videos to watch. Here's your homework, and we'll talk in four days. And I'm going to walk you through this, and I'm going to do it for free. So, yes, the paperwork has been filed for the badge to be RU Santa approved. So, yes, I take this very seriously. I'd love to have a conversation with anybody out there that wants to know more information about RU Santa approved. SantaPapaJohn.com. But you know, the marketing people are loving this idea because the badge is clean, it's unique, it's special, and it's one of a kind, and it stands out. That's you a know, nice pop. So I give people the badge once they sign up to put on their website. So now, Mads, when you get Santa approved, you're going to have friends going, Hey, Mads, what's this all about? I want to know. And you're going to tell two friends and you're going to tell two friends. And the proverbial is, I'm going to get my thousand people signed up that I need. And, you know, a thousand people when I'm dealing with just my hotspots of U.S., Canada, and Australia is 500 million people. I want 1,000 out of 500 million. Not even including, you know, Denmark, France. Germany, England, Spain, Mexico, all the other countries that I've talked to people from. Yeah, we love Santa's much over here. Um, I do oh, think there's yes, a few. Absolutely, you sure do. I think there's a few Danish people that believe he should be green. There's something about he used to wear green back here, way back. Yep. Yep. Um, I've heard something and about it. The, the Russians have the blue. So, yes, there, there's different colors for different and different names like saint nicholas and father christmas and yes it's uh you know the more you talk to people the more you learn about different traditions so that is becoming an interesting part of doing this wonderful job that i've been put into and everybody loves santa though yes if he's absolutely. red blue green we yep. still love santa all of us I think yep, it's absolutely you, you've said many a times you're not a master marketer. I think you're getting there. I think you're getting there <laughs> because there's a I see a bunch of smart marketing moves that people pay. You know, I'm getting a few for. people telling me lately, man, I love the way you're doing things. I love the way you present ideas. And you've got such a unique product. You know, back to the original statement when we started. There's a lot of people out there that throw a red suit on and a hat on and a fake beard and they think they're Santa Claus. There's a lot more to it than that. I go to Santa school, you know, uh, where I learn from people that have way more history than I do about doing this wonderful job, this career, this ability to change people's lives by giving the ability to smile, giggle, and laugh. And we definitely need more of that in this world, regardless of where we are. Couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm there, now I'm curious about Santa School. We don't have time for that, sadly. So if people as are as curious as I am and want to hear about what Santa School is about, let us know down below and I'll let Santa know that he needs to come back on and tell us about Santa School. However, for the people that would like to meet the closest thing to a real center if not the real center i would you could fool me where should they reach out to you you mentioned your website santapapajohn.com i'll have that let me let me below. throw this one in real quick you know i'm reading stories to the children on youtube on my youtube channel and on tiktok now we're going to take that a step further matt and can you imagine your Aunt Sally with her family with three children that I'm going to read a custom story to your Aunt Sally's family with the children's name inputted into the story. Now, is that not a lifetime of incredible memories that I can create for families around the world? I would have remembered that Christmas very vividly if I was... Little Sally. 
But, you know, it's the little ideas that can create the biggest memories. Beautiful, you said. Probably the best thing I've heard all day, actually. Well, so thank you. Those links I, for the YouTube, TikTok, those will also be down below, just so it's really easy for people to go check you out and no misspelling. Because I know I I'm, I'm the that. guy that's going to misspell stuff. So I know the struggle. <laughs> so the links are there because I get annoyed when people don't put the links. I'm like, you're lazy bastard. Yes. Share the links. You know, I do. I know we're running out of time, but I do a video every day to promote happiness and cheerfulness and, and just positive. But on Sunday, I do a video the same way, but it's, Support your friend's small business Sunday. And I emphasize that, you know, we all have friends that run small businesses. We all know someone that runs a small business. How do you support them without spending one dollar, one penny, one nickel? Like, share, and comment on their page, on their posts, and that will help the algorithms. Your friends see who they are. And that's how the support will be built for your friend's small business Sunday. But it's a cool idea and people are starting to catch on and they're starting to put comments on, well, oh, here's my friend's business and I want to support him. That's what it's all about because it doesn't cost. Everybody is so money hungry, money cheap on spending money especially when it comes to their friends businesses it's kind of sad that society does that you know but if we like shared and made a comment on their posts on their website and shared their posts shared their website everybody would succeed and we all know there are many small businesses out there that are struggling because they have not adapted to the new way of thinking after COVID. And I'm sure you, in your business, you run into people all the time that are still thinking pre-COVID advertising, promotions, and, and, and marketing. Plenty of them. Plenty of them still out there. Yeah, and absolutely. I do sometimes enjoy it because that means potential business. Absolutely. So I'm not so complaining. So and I'd love to have a conversation with anybody out there and that wants to know more. Thank you for coming on, Santa. It was a real pleasure. This has been a blast. Thank you for the very intriguing questions and uh, the wonderful conversation that we've shared. And I hope your all your customers or all your clients that are watching this, I hope they get something good out of it and they uh, come and knock on Matt's door and say, Hey, you need to get more guys on your your video like this guy because he was wonderful. He was able to share some great insights.